Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor. And today I'm so excited because we have a very special guest today. This is Amy Valentine, and she is an executive life coach. And she has such wonderful things today to share with us. She's going to focus on self-love and self-care. And she has some amazing tips that she wants to share with you. Before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to the Happiness Expo. They're going to be in New Jersey, in Livingston, New Jersey. And they have over 100 exhibitors. They'll be giving away a lot of free products. There'll be a lot of doctors, health coaches, and many people in the healthcare field there to answer questions and to show you great new products, technologies, and things that are going on in the healthcare industry, in the natural uh, healthcare. And we, there's a lot to show you. So I'll have all the information in our um, description where you can contact them if you want to be an exhibitor or if you just want to participate and come. All that information will be in the description box. So take a look and see if it's something that might interest you. People from all over the nation will be coming to this event. So it's going to be a really great thing to look into. So Amy, I am so excited to have you on the show. I love the concept of self Care. I think it's so important, self-love, self-care. It's something that a lot of people lack in their lives or they feel guilty about giving themselves a little time, a little love. And it's such an important factor, especially if you want to have good health mentally, physically, spiritually, it has to be incorporated into your life. So I'm going to give this show to you because I want to learn a little about you, who you are and what you do. Tell the whole world about you because you're awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me on today. Uh, as a coach, I get really excited about the possibility of helping people make change in their life and especially make change with how they feel about themselves and how they speak to themselves, how they treat themselves every single day. And often when I talk about self-care and self-love, I really like to start with really breaking it down to small little moments where people can take real action to help feel more love for themselves. Yes. So for example, what are people doing first thing in the morning to show themselves some love? Yes. This idea of, you know, being grateful. We know gratitude is a big part of this being grateful that they, you know, I woke up this morning. I'm really grateful for this new day, but then taking the moments, you know, often people's, their first activity is going to the washroom, right? right? Taking those moments to, as you're, you're scrubbing your hands, you know, really being grateful and present and feeling your skin and, and talking kindly to yourself, saying yeah. beautiful messages to yourself about, well, you know, I'm, I'm really grateful that uh, my skin is so soft or uh, I, I, I'm I going to work on this smiling more today and like give yourself a smile in the mirror or, or yeah. uh, you know, saying those kind things to start the day and using those moments, you know, you're having a shower and actually being present with your body, being present, noticing uh, how the soap feels on your body, being really present and caring and kind in those little moments. So many people talk about self-care as this idea that you have to go away on a spa retreat, you know, you have yeah. to get a massage every time or sit in a bathtub every time for it to be self-care. Yeah. There are so many ways that we can show ourselves some more love every single day with these mini moments versus just these, of course, those are nice experiences to go to the, the spa yeah. retreat, right? But we, we don't want to wait for that moment to be kind to ourselves or to show right. ourselves compassion and love. If we can find ways to integrate that and then notice, I also talk a lot to uh, professionals, notice how this action of being kind to yourself and how you're showing up ripple effects into how you interact with your coworkers, how you interact with your family, how you interact with your, your customers, the people that you're around in your life. Yeah. If you're feeling better, you're going to show up in a different way and I think that's a beautiful reason to practice and be mindful of your self-love moments because it's it's giving back to you, but also a, a way to show up for others. And, and I'm going to be honest, uh, yesterday I, I didn't show up well and when I, in, in a moment, and when I was doing some reflection back, it was recognizing, okay, there were some things that I had missed in taking care of me. Right. And if I want to be better, I get to do better. Right. And that means starting with me and how I'm I'm taking care of myself, right? 
Yes, of course. You know, mm -hmm. I find too, a lot of people, either moms or even people in the workforce or, you know, even moms that are working or, you know, vice versa, but people who have busy lives, they mm -hmm. constantly are so uh, overwhelmed that they're like, I don't have time. I, I just don't have time to take care of myself. Like I, I you know, there, I can't take 15 minutes of the day to show myself some self-love and self-care. I'm just too busy. You know, I get up in the morning, I got to do this, I got to do this. And when I'm home, I, I have to cook or I have to do this and this. And, uh, you know, I'm just tired by the end of the night and I don't have time. Like, what do you say to those people? You know, because yeah. to me, it's an excuse. We could give ourselves a few minutes. You could do it anywhere. You could, you could exemplify self-love. So What's your feelings on that? Yeah, I really, I'm glad you bring this up because I have lots of people say the exact same thing to me. And I often go back to the very simple, okay, so tell me about how you start your morning. It's sometimes it's a mindset shift. Like I'm saying, we right. think that self-care, self-love has to be this big, giant ordeal. Yes. When in fact, it's helping them to shift their thinking and their perspective around uh, while I am cooking, one of the ways that I like to show myself love is to turn on, I really love the piano guys music. This is a shout out, free shout out for the piano guys. <laughs> <laughs> I really love their music. Like I, I love it. And yeah. so that is a moment and it's like, I don't have to take any extra time yeah. in order other than like what the 30 seconds it takes me to turn on the, the link on YouTube. Exactly. 30 seconds, right? And now I'm still doing all the activities that I need to be doing at that time for yeah. my family. Yeah. But I'm filling up my own cup by something that brings me happiness. And yeah, the kids might make fun of me a little bit because it's not their music, <laughs> but I'm like, listen, <laughs> this is what mom likes. Like, uh -huh, deal exactly. with it, you know? <laughs> but this is what I mean by, you know, it's shifting the perspective that it has to take a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, also looking at, you know, I'm also the the person who's running. I, I run my youngest. I don't run her. I walk yeah, yeah. her to school. Uh -huh. But you know, we've got that that mindset there, yeah. right? It could be yeah. I'm running them to school. I'm I've got to I've, notice my words. I've got to fit this in. How can I how can I make this happen? It's it's shifting around to I get to walk my child to school. I get to have that fresh air. I get to feel the sun on my face. Right. Right. I get to you know have those little moments with her, and soon they're going to be gone. Right. <laughs> My older exactly. kids don't watch to school with me anymore. Right. Yeah. And so taking a step back and saying, okay, how is this showing myself love? It is the recognition of this moment is helping me feel love. It's yeah. helping me give love. It's helping me uh, be present, be interactive. Right. Yeah. So there, I think there's a lot of different ways for us to look at our thinking about mm -hmm. the situation. And if we reframe it to, there is something in here, like as you're cooking your meal and you're cutting up, I don't know, let's say you're cutting up peppers to put in your dish, right? like actually saying, you know, this is an act of love because I may not really want to have peppers in today, but <laughs> it's, it's showing myself love by yeah. having these beautiful nutrients go into my body, right? right. So it's reframing. I love that. I, you know, it's a lot of times we just look at things, you know, straightforward, a specific way, or we're taught that way because mm -hmm. of our, the family we grew up in. So our thinking patterns, you know, even though we may not want to be like our parents, we, because we grew up with them, we tend to sometimes grasp the way they think. And it might not be the healthiest way to think, you know, and I always say there's always time for change. doesn't matter what age you are. We could always change ourselves for the better. And I love how you say rephrasing it, because just by rephrasing a sentence and putting it in our mind, you could take something that's negative or stressful and it could become positive all of a sudden just by rephrasing it. Just like you said. Well, my kids, I'm an empty nester now. So, you know, during my elementary years, like towards the, the, my third child was my last child. And I was starting to get frustrated because you get to that age where like, you know, the first one, you're all energetic. The second one, you're like, okay. The third one, you're like, all right, it's chaotic, you know, whatever, you know, you want to do that? Go ahead, do that, you know? And, but then it was like, you know, once they finished elementary, I was like, oh, okay. I don't have to do this. I don't have to do that. But then once it was gone, I, I missed it. You know, yeah. I was like, oh my God, my kids are all grown up. 
you know, I don't have those moments anymore. So instead of just like, you know, thinking about it in a negative way, like, oh, I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to go to this, this fair, I got to do, you know, help out with this. You know, I could think about it the way you mentioned and say, you know, it's only going to last for so long and then it's going to be gone. And that's when we we miss it. And, you know, I always say, like, when you talk about gratitude, the little things in life, we don't realize how valuable they are until they're taken away from us. Yes. And then that's when we realize, wow, I really should have realized how important it was, but I didn't. I was blinded at that moment. And I love how you mentioned music, because a lot of times I will I will become such a different person when I put certain types of music on Same. it just it just changes your whole mind frame it changes the way you think the way you feel your energy level and you know when you were talking about that I was even thinking about something I I would buy these little incense in the in the shower you just put them on the bottom of the shower and they kind of evaporate in the hot water but you you're feeling you're smelling the lavender or whatever scents you pick so it's not it's not a bath but it's like you're you're starting to focus on the smell and then the smell is kind of changing the way you think, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and it's giving you a, a different energy, a different feeling. And it's like, just like you said, these little, little things, they don't little take things. long. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, like both of us have a little bit of makeup on today, right? It's like that moment of like, why are we doing the thing we're doing? Yeah. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I'm doing this because it helps me to feel good about about myself. Right. Exactly. I, 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 I adopted putting on lipstick during uh, COVID yeah. because of all the Zoom. And uh -huh. I was like, this makes me feel good. It makes yeah. me feel ready. You know, I, exactly. So having that moment of recognition of why you're doing the thing and can you shift your right. thinking around that. I also I wanted to add in this <laughs> idea of I still remember like the last few diapers. Yeah. Like the last few times I had to change diapers, right? Yeah. And really I I would challenge people to recognize the the moments of you know really being being more present. I think that's an act of self-love as well, being yeah. more present in the moment so that you can say, you know, okay, one day I will miss this. How can I enjoy this a little bit more? You know, yeah. you're wiping somebody's butt. How can I enjoy <laughs> this a little bit more? And that's how I would remember, like in, yeah. in very short time from now, I will not have this uh, experience and yay for some parts, but like there's, as we progress through life, there is this transition that we go through. So how can we find the beautiful moments right. and allow that to help us feel the the love and, and kindness for ourselves? I think also, I, I feel like humor also plays a part. Instead of taking yeah. life so seriously, I, I think about some of the funny moments, like you said about changing diapers. When my, my, one of my, my sons was, was learning how to, um, he was learning how to, to clean himself by himself. And, you know, he would come out of the, run out of the bath, bathroom and he would stick his butt and go, is it clean yet? Is it clean yet? You know? <laughs> Is it clean? Is it clean? Go back. You know? And it's like, I think back to those little memories and, you know, it just yeah. puts a smile on my face and changes my whole, you know, trajectory of how I feel at that moment. You know, those are all moments of self-love that we could cherish and not feel sad that they're gone, but, you know, be grateful that we had those memories, those little yes. fun memories that we can go back to. And, you know, and, and sometimes I think too, you have to think about, okay, you know, I did all this stuff, you know, I, it's, I, I'm, I, I deserve to have a little self-love. I deserve to take care of myself because look at all the things I've done for others. Now it's time for me. And especially if you see, you sometimes you see mothers and you see even men that are working or, you know, they're playing role reversal. They have this drained look on their face. They're tired. They're stressed. They're drained. You, you could see the, the changes in their skin color just because of the everything they're doing. Stress and pressure. Yeah. yeah, they're doing everything for everybody and not enough for themselves. Yeah, so I like to... I, I also like to bring this into the workplace as well for these people who are juggling multiple things, right? Is is recognizing what are the ways that we can show ourselves some care, some compassion, some love in the middle of a work day. Exactly. It's things like, I mean, people laugh at me, but I say, okay, well, 
what about five wall push-ups or something yeah. like, and they're like, well, that's not going to do anything. I say, well, okay, well, five wall push-ups for a hundred days is 500 push-ups. Wow. That's a lot yeah. Of push-ups. That's a lot of push-ups. Do you think that that would like make a difference? Sure. It's, but it's shifting your state, right? It's the yeah. same as when we listen to music, it's shifting our state. So how can we shift our state? How can we show ourselves some of that love? So if we're feeling uh, really low, uh, even today, as I was preparing for this, I was like, I'm feeling off because of some things. I'm going to go do a meditation. So my normal amount of time that I would do, I didn't have time for that, but I, I right. shortened the amount of time. There's a great app. It's free insight timer, Ooh. another free plug there. Insight timer is my favorite. And so I, I just chose the time and I, and I took a couple of minutes, but it's that in your middle of your workday, recognizing I'm feeling down. I'm not, I'm not going to show up the way that I want to show up. So what can I do to help myself right? so that I can show up in a better way? And I mean, there's many examples of this going for a walk around your building, a walk yeah. outside, if you can standing at a window, even so exactly. literally standing up uh, out of your seat. If you, if you're in a, a spot where there's a window and just putting your face near the glass looking out but like feeling the the light on your face yeah really helps as well so just these small moments I beside me I have pictures of things that remind me of of happy moments yeah. I have uh, my vision board behind my computer you know is your environment yeah. reminding you of the love that you have in your life mm -hmm. is it is it reminding you to think in a different way is your right. environment creating that energy that you want to have all of those small moments like we were giggling about flowers before we got started this is my way of showing myself love yes is, is having things that bring me happiness around me yeah I think it's so important. I think that's such a great point is that our surroundings make such a difference. And I even say, you know, to people, you know, some people, they clutter a lot of stuff or they throw things on top. And that's a sign of how your brain is thinking, how, you know, if, you know, if you could try to organize things and, and, you know, that shows when people are more organized, that shows that they have a clearer mind. When people have things all scattered all over the place and on top of each other, that's that's a sign of how they're thinking and feeling inside themselves. And that's like a warning red flag, you know, okay, you know, what's going on in my life? You know, you know, what do I need to do to make a more clear surrounding, you know, mm -hmm. a more healthier surrounding, like you said, because that's, you know, it really, it plays a role when you look around the room or you're in, you know, cause there's always certain places we spend a lot of time in, whether it's at work or in our house, there's always like one or two rooms that we're in all the time. And so you have to make sure those surroundings, like you said, are healthy, you know, yeah. do you like, are the colors good? Are, are they, you know, is the room organized? Is the, you know, is, is, do you have things in there that make you happy? You know, I think that's such a great point because I, I think it, it plays such a, you know, our mind, you know, all these things our mind takes in for account. Because even like when they do marketing, they'll make certain colors, you know, for the outsides of labels because the colors, they trigger certain things in our brain. And we should think about that when we're creating a surrounding for our own lives too. Yeah, it's very, it's very interesting, right? And I, I also like to think about what are the, uh, if you're aiming to be more kind or compassionate or loving uh, to yourself, how can you keep this top of mind in the very crazy, chaotic lives that yes. many people live, right? Right, we expect oh, sure right? We expect our brain to just be on the lookout for these moments. But if we're not reminding ourselves of that, so it's, it's as simple of like having little uh, notes, uh, a little tag on your, uh, your laptop or your computer on your yeah. refrigerator on right. my one of my favorites is uh, on my bathroom mirror, I use whiteboard or like erase dry erase markers. Yeah. yeah. And uh for a time, one of the areas that I was really looking to grow and improve in myself was this belief that I am enough. And right. I know many people struggle with that in relation to the self-love component. Yes. And so I put that message everywhere I could possibly put it on my bathroom, in the kitchen. I had a sticky note above the sink where I would do I dishes. Like I found the the temporary tattoos, yeah, yeah, you know, for that. So I was seeing the message. I would challenge people that if if you're feeling like 
you you want to take this as part of your mission for February to really show yourself some lo love and kindness. How are you yeah. going to remind yourself in right. your world around you, in this bubble around you, yeah. that this is a priority for you? Yes. I think that's such an important factor because you know what? I think self-love is some self-worth is what I meant to say. Self-worth is something that a lot of people lack. You know, even if you have a high self-esteem there, you get your moments where you're, you don't feel good enough. You know, I, I, I look back sometimes and I, I have accomplished so much and there are moments where I just don't feel that I am where I want to be, or I don't feel that self-worth that I should feel. And then you have to, you know what, then you have to remind yourself, just like you said, it's like, put some sticky notes or put, put a tattoo. I love that idea of a tattoo. That's an amazing idea. You know, remind yourself of how much you've done in life, you know, give yourself yeah. credit. I think that's a, something that we all do. Either some people do it all the time and it's not healthy and they got to break out of that. Or there's moments that we all, we all do it because, you know, in life we go through so many different obstacles in life and we go through so much in life. And, and, you know, sometimes we, we want to be, you know, we, we set these goals in our, in our head, you know, of what we wish we could be or wish we could do. And, you know, it's either not feasible or you're not ready. It's not your time, you know, and just take in the moment, I think, you know, and, and, and just, just, you know, try to feel that you're worthy because you are worthy. We're all special people. Everybody has something special about ourselves, you know, and I think that's what people have to embed in their brain that we all are great. We all have our strengths. We all have certain things about us that are just amazing. And I think people have to just learn how to like realize that. Do you have any like yeah. ideas of how people, you gave us some great ideas right now, but it, you know, what do people have like a lack of self-worth in their life? You know, because that also goes into self, self-love. If you're not, you don't feel worthy, you're not going to spend time to, to give yourself self-love because you're, you yeah, don't feel sure. worthy of it. What do you say to those people that come to you and they just like, they want to feel better, but you could tell that they don't feel good about themselves. One of my favorite exercises, if people are ready and open to do it is, uh, is to do with recognizing where it all began. So I want to ask you a question to paint this picture. Right. And for people who are listening to really like settle into this idea when you first saw your firstborn mm -hmm. and you held that little baby in your hands, was that baby enough? Oh, for sure. Yeah, it was. But I was completely satisfied. I, my world was it was just full of joy and love and and everything else, you know, that was positive. I just was. It was You're in awe. Right? I was in awe. I was in awe. Yes. Yeah. And I love using that word because it's like that moment and it doesn't even have to be your own baby. Anyone's baby, a baby in front of yeah. you. Often the word is, oh, like, isn't <laughs> yeah. that interesting? Right. Isn't yeah. that interesting? And so, you know, so your answer right away was, you know, of course this baby is enough. Yeah. And the baby couldn't talk yet. Right. Right. Yeah. The baby couldn't walk. Mm -hmm. The baby couldn't earn money. Right. The baby didn't have a college education or whatever. Yeah. We stack up as enough in right. air quotes for people who are listening, right? All of these things that we stack up as enough. When I have this car, I'll be enough. When I hit this job, I'll be enough. When I travel the world, I'll be enough. When I make this amount of money, blah, blah, blah. But yet the baby was enough the moment they arrived. Right. And so I like to give people this exercise of like really having their baby photo. I'm holding up a baby photo of myself. I like that idea. Having a, their baby photo like nearby. I have one that I can literally pull off the wall to share for this example. And I have one yeah. directly behind my computer screen that I can look at yeah. while working. So when I fall into that trap, which yeah. many of us fall into of like, sure. oh, I shouldn't say that because I'm not enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not wise enough. I'm not all the things. Yeah. I look over at her who is still me. Let's just be yeah. clear on that. Right. I am still that same small baby. You are still that same worthy human. Yeah. Right. And when we can come back to that, I call it a remembering, remembering, because when we were first new here, for the most part, we believed that we were enough until we 
all of a sudden didn't. Right. And so it's a remembering, it's a, it's a coming back to that state yeah. of recognizing our own worthiness. Yes. And so that's my, my favorite one is to, to find a baby po photo, post it where you're going to see it all the time. And then to yeah. speak words of kindness to yourself through that baby, to really look the baby in the eyes and to see, you know, I, I'm, I might be bigger. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wiser. I'm smarter. Right. I've had more life. Yeah but I'm still that human. Right. And you know, that's a good point. Cause when you go back to it, do you ever notice when you have children, the, the children that you raised still have that same personality as they were a baby. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, that baby you hold in your hand and you go, Oh, is the same child. And, and when they grow up, they'll have that same, those similar characteristics and stuff like that. And we carry those similar characteristics. And I, I think, you know, people really need to realize that it's it's not about the materialistic things in life. And I think that's what we get caught up in is that we compare ourselves to other people or we compare ourselves to this stupid social media and, and, mm -hmm. and all these celebrities and they don't realize that they have real lives too. And what they see is not really exactly who they are. It's really about how you feel about yourself and yeah. and really feeling good about yourself. You know, yeah. I think there's another layer to add to this of, and you know, it's that slightly morbid question of like, how would you want to feel at the end? Yeah. You know, when the end is near or right. it's, it's right then. Yeah. Do you feel like you have lived the life that you are are happy with? And if right. if the answer for you listening right now is no, you have an opportunity in this next moment yes. to do something in alignment with the life you actually want to live. So if you want to be more kind, how can you be more kind in the next moment? Exactly. If you want to show more love, how can you be show more love in the next moment, right? We talk so much about, you know, into the future and someday I'll do this. Yes. We get to do the thing right now that right. helps us take one more step in into that life that we want to live and and being that that kind of person that we want to be. And and you can make that change as you said. I agree with you. You can make that change in any moment. Right. So just because you've been one way for perhaps from this moment and all your whole life, this new moment right now is right. a new moment to make a new choice and have a new behavior and a new thinking. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. I think, you know, people have to really look at themselves honestly and say, am I happy with who I am? Am I happy with my life? Am I happy with the way I'm feeling? When I look in the mirror, do I like who I see? And if those answers or any of those answers are no, then maybe it's time to, like you said, make those little changes, break those little habits, like you were saying, because I think that's so important. And I like how you mentioned, you know, is if you were at the end, is this how you want to feel? That's a perfect, that is like an excellent, you know, um, example, you know, is this how you want to feel if you were at your last days? And if it's not, what can I do about it? You know, mm -hmm. and I think that's perfect, you know, and, and, you know, what, when I was talking to you in the beginning, I was thinking about, you know, so, so many people have guilt about, about giving themselves self-love and they, they feel that, you know, um, that they, 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 they really need to focus on everybody else. You know, what do you say to those people? Cause like we were talking about in the beginning, but I feel like, you know, it's such an important topic because I see so many people they feel guilty or shameful to to put themselselves first. They feel like it, 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 it they're they're a bad person if they put themselves first. And mm -hmm. you know, and it, it's not true. what What is your your intake on that? Yeah. I one of the things that I like to go back to this, I feel bad. I feel bad about doing this for me or I feel bad or I shouldn't do this for myself or any of these statements that we're making. I like to go back to, okay, why do you believe that's true? Right. Like yes. really understanding where this is coming from for the person, because for many of us, it's different reasons. Yeah. Um, I also like to, to look at, how do they want to move, go forward in their life? So even though up until this now moment, they've done the same behavior of feeling bad about it, 
I I want them to I and challenge them to say, okay, if if I could wave a magic magic wand or things could be different, yeah, what would be different in how you act about putting yourself first or doing something for yourself. And most of the time it's like, I, I, I don't want to feel bad that I'm going to do the thing. So we get to start acting the way that we aim to be. Right. <laughs> so giving ourselves permission to go do the activity. And although the first time that we do it may feel really awkward and it may feel uncomfortable because sometimes it's this idea of, I haven't earned it. Right. I haven't, uh, you know, I don't deserve it because I haven't earned it. I haven't earned the right, or it's taking time away from somebody else or something else that I notice quote unquote should be doing Mm -hmm. anytime I'm really focused on noticing the words that are coming out of my mouth. I challenge Mm -hmm. other people to notice the words that are coming out of their mouth because that's a really good indicator of the the things that they're thinking. Yes. And to really evaluate, what does that mean? Well, I I should be doing this for someone else. I should be going somewhere else, even though I really want to be, you know, let's say going to the gym or something. Yes evaluating why is that should word coming up for you in that moment? Right. What is that? What does that actually mean that their needs are more important than your needs? Okay. So if that's, if that's your belief at that time, why is that belief? Is that belief serving you any anymore? Is that belief true for you today? Do you want it to still be true tomorrow? Right. And, and being honest, if the individual is saying, okay, I want to go to the gym, but I should stay home with my kids or I should do more work or I should whatever clean the house. It's again, going back to what are the priorities for you? What are, what are the real priorities in that moment? And recognizing, okay, maybe if you, you're not able to leave the the child at that time, then yes, you should stay with the child. But if you have the way to have, you know, the, the daycare or the someone else take care of the, the child, the mm-hmm. should isn't as powerful anymore. Yes. And it's taking the power away from that and stepping into the alternative, the reframe of yes. maybe I should, if you have to use that word, I don't, I really avoid that word as much as possible, but saying, I'm choosing to go to the gym and these are the reasons why, because it helps me feel good because it gives me more energy because it helps me be the the parent I want to be or the the worker that I want to be or the owner or the boss or whatever. Uh, I'm going, I am going to do this because I'm taking control of of this moment in my life and it feels good to do this. Right. Right. And so shifting the power away from uh, this energy of of should or um guilt a way to who do you want to show up as that's in alignment with the person you want to be and what actions are in alignment with that person i love that i think that's a great advice you know and i also feel like when we when we bring positive energy around us like when we start doing good stuff we start having showing positive energy and i feel like I don't know if you ever realized it, but when you're feeling positive and you're feeling good, do you ever feel like you attract more positive people oh, around yes. you, you know? And it's like when, so if people are going through, going through obstacles in their life and they're going through and they're having a hard time showing themselves some self-love, self-care, so, you know, they don't feel worthy of themselves. You, you ever notice that those type of people start to swarm around you too, you know, and you kind of like, you attract those people and what happens, you get sucked your energy gets sucked by them and then you start to even fall down into a deeper hole. But if you're able to give yourself self-love, start to feel good about yourself, you start to shine. That energy shows through you between your actions, between your the way you look and your face. You know, if you ever notice positive people have a glow to them, they have mm-hmm. the spark, you know, and that spark brings other positive people around. So in a sense, you know, just by showing a little self-love to yourself, you're actually I think, you know, elevating yourself to, to a a higher level of happiness and a higher level of, of enjoying life and and seeing life from a whole different viewpoint. What's your take on that? Oh, a hundred percent (laughs) agree. We, we attract the energy that we're putting out a hundred percent. 
And yes, if you're in a in a low state, and I, I go back to my example of even this morning, I I am aware of my state. So I think that's the first step when yes. people are feeling low is being aware that where what you're feeling yes and then knowing the tools the resources that help you pull yourself out of that yes so that you can raise the vibration vibration and i and i really talk a lot about this like it's a small we're taking small steps yeah micro steps you don't have to go from feeling the lowest of the low to like the happiest human on the planet it's yeah. Take a small step to feel a little bit better. What's right. something else you can do to feel a little bit better? What's self something else, right? It's just knowing yeah. the things that help you feel better. And those things are going to look different for you than they are for me. But gathering those resources so that when you feel those moments of low time, yes. or maybe you've been in a state of low for some time, yeah. you can say, you know what? Okay, well, in the past, what helped me to feel happy or nice mm -hmm. or good or content yeah. was uh, coloring, I don't know, or yeah, painting yeah. a picture or going for a walk or listening to the birds or uh, listening to piano music or yeah. uh, dancing to, uh, you know, some chicken dance song. I don't know. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. <laughs> but the, the idea is, is that you get really clear for yourself on what are the things that help you to feel better when you are low so that you have a resource to go to yes. and, and, the speed at which you can go to that resource list or a plan faster, shifting away from the low feelings faster so you yeah. can get back to feeling better. This is the goal, right? So oh, yeah. real, real humans, I mean, all of us humans have low moments. This is right. reality. Yes. Social media only shows the positive things, right? But yes. mm -hmm. we all have low stuff. It's it's how long are you going to stay in it? Right. Exactly. How long are you going to stay in it? So if you know the resources that help you to feel better, like cracking a joke, finding some dad jokes. I, at it for a time, I, I really enjoyed watching cat videos. I don't have cats. I don't have dogs. I don't have any animals right now, yeah. but cat videos are hilarious, right? So mm -hmm. it's just like knowing some of the things that you can use, the tools to help you feel better and using those to help you not stay stuck for so long. Yes, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I, I think, you know, one thing I, I find too, in our society, we, we, uh, we are in a go-go society. Everyone wants quick results. And I, when you mentioned micro versus macro, I'm like, you know what, that's a great topic just to slightly bring up because everyone wants quick results, but you know, everybody goes at a different speed, like you said, but nothing happens overnight it's going to take, it takes baby steps. And eventually you'll probably, you know, not even probably if you're, if you're focused and you do what you need to do for yourself, you'll get there, but mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily don't expect to go from A to Z the next day. And I think that's, that's what, you know, people in their head, that everything, for some reason, our society now wants everything quick, quick, quick. They just don't, they don't, they don't realize. <laughs> Thank you, that. Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> prime time, you know, <laughs> you know, it's just like, you know, I explain to people, you know, that things don't happen overnight, that it's a process because I don't, you know, from your, you know, from your expertise, I think people need to hear that and understand it better, you know, because people want boom, boom, boom. And that's not the way it is. Yeah, we we've been conditioned, as I joke about, with the amazing Amazon Prime yeah. <laughs> and, and even email. I mean, email conditioned us that, or text, right? It conditioned yeah. us that we send a message, we get a response immediately. But that's right. not real life. No, with making change. Yes. <laughs> Now, some, I do believe that some change can be like a snap in mm -hmm. that, like you can make that solid of a decision on something and never do it again. I have seen that happen yes. for people. And it, I mean, it's extreme cases, but my own dad quit smoking because of his mom's uh, passing and he never picked it up again. Like right. you can make that kind of decision. It's not that it's not the same for everyone and it doesn't happen all the time, all the things, right? right? It's not mm -hmm. a blanket statement, but it is possible to make a shift like that yeah. for most of us. Most of the time though, it's yeah. taking these small micro actions, these mini moments added up every single day. It's the same idea as the five push-ups times a hundred days, right? If you yeah. can be, take the small thing 
and be consistent at it right. over time, that's where you're going to see the changes. And for even the idea when I was working on my own enoughness, it was the idea of, okay, I'm, I'm repeating the statement to myself. I'm looking for proof each day of how I am enough. I'm looking yeah. for proof of how I'm showing myself love. I'm tracking this. Yes. I'm, I'm being consistent with the thing that I'm focused on. Part of what I actually see that is the biggest challenge is that because we are so connected in the world, there's billions of ideas of how we can improve ourselves, And yeah. people make a list of 20 to 30 to 40 things of like, I'm going to do all these things. Yeah. And I'm not saying that any of them are wrong or bad. It's the amount that we try and take on, on yeah. top of our already busy lives. And of course, then we're not following through on the majority of them. Right. And so we think that nothing's working Yeah. when in fact, if we would have just picked one or two things. So when I'm coaching someone, it is one or two things at the most that we are focusing exactly. on, on top of our crazy busy life. Right. Yes. So they can actually see the difference. They can see the needle moving. They can see each day. Okay. Did I do right. the thing? Yes. How did I feel? Okay. Did I do the thing the next day? How did I feel? Right. We are really being yeah. mindful of that one thing and really staying focused and committed to it versus taking on this giant list that it's impossible yeah. to have all of those new things added mm -hmm. onto our busy lives with exactly. consistency for most people, like one to two things added per week. But over time, imagine if we add one thing this week and we focus on it and we really commit to it in two months, we are such rock stars at that, that yeah. it's it's such a habit. It's not even a thing we're thinking about anymore and it's already ingrained. Yeah. So now we can add two new things and, and work with this kindness and compassion for ourselves that it's more important to focus yeah and and stay the course and be consistent with it and then reap the benefits of adding a new thing a sh you know a, a period of time later versus overwhelming yes. ourselves more oh a hundred percent i agree i'm a hundred percent with you because i think that's the problem with most people is they they make a list long of things and it's virtually impossible. It's overwhelming, I think, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I think that's when, when people start to talk about change and they start to think about all the different things they have to do. I think that's where the point of, of overwhelming, they become overwhelmed. They don't even want to try or, you know, it's it just, they get scared and fearful. They just give up. Yeah. Yeah. Or they just give up, you know, and I was talking about this with someone else. I think it was like the first, when people make resolutions, it was like the, the first week or two, like, you know, it was like something really early on. Most people, yep. you know, have broke their resolutions and like by the third week, people have just even forgotten about their resolutions, you know, yep. but if you, if you do it the way you said, you know, if people start to make goals, but make one or two goals to just maybe focus on one. And then once they accomplished it, maybe add another one and add another mm -hmm. one, you know, wow. You know, think about what, what you could accomplish in, in a month time. And then like three months from then, imagine you could be like a new person, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's amazing. You There's know. a really cool quote. That's like, we overestimate what we can accomplish in a day and underestimate yeah. what we can accomplish in a year. I don't know who yeah. said that, but right. it's so true. Right. So if we can just look over time versus this immediate, like I have to be better. Yes. And completely better by tomorrow. Well, my goodness, that's a that's a big <laughs> challenge. That is a huge <laughs> challenge. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I was wondering, like, what do you feel about like either like journaling or creating like goals and writing them down and stuff like that? Like, you know, when people are trying to get their thoughts together and they're trying to figure out, okay, what do I need to do? Who do I want to become? How do I start showing myself self-love? Like, how do you get everybody to like organize their, their thoughts, their goals, their objectives? Like, is there something that you, you have them do so they can be like clear-minded and focused? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I really like to get to have the individual be clear with themselves on what fits for them first. Right. So it's not me telling them you have to go journal or you have to do it yeah. this way. It's, you know, 
asking people, are you someone who likes to write? Are you someone who likes to reflect while driving? Are you someone who likes to reflect while you're in the shower? Are you right. someone who listens to, uh, who listens to podcasts or, um, uh, likes to, uh, make to-do lists, like getting clear on yeah. the individual and what their processing style is, is, would be step one for me. And if, if the person says that they like journaling, it's really getting them into the habit of how do they do that activity? Often mm -hmm. I hear people limited by, well, I didn't have the right pen or I didn't have the right journal <laughs> or I didn't have the, I didn't have my thing with mm -hmm. me or I, mm -hmm. I forgot to do it. Okay. Well, so it's about getting clear on how do we make the thing you want to do easier. Right. Um, so you actually follow through with it. Yeah. Versus me saying you have to do something and then feeling like they're letting me down, right? Right. I want it to always be designed to that person. Yeah. Um, but I would have them think think about the questions in the way that feels aligned to them through yes. writing, through through speaking to a friend or a coach, through uh, through um, speaking to themselves, through just simply pondering it while they're driving or pondering it in meditation or however yeah. is you know, how am I feeling? What am I happy about in, in my current life? What mm -hmm. would I like to shift? Yes. And of course, using smart goals. Uh, I was in a, a session recently and the person before me who was speaking was talking about, you know, we got to do smart goals, right? Specific, measurable, achievable, yes. realistic, and time oriented. I was like, yes, this is great. And then she went on to say, okay, um, and I'm going to use this, this example. She said, okay, uh, I think our first goal could be, and it was for a, a team that I was with. I think our first goal could be that we're going to run faster. And I'm in the background going, wait a second. Like I'm like <laughs> trying to hold it in because it wasn't my turn to talk yet, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to run faster is not a smart goal. Yeah. It's not exactly. clear. Right. You want to run faster than what? Right. For how long? Exactly. <laughs> right. A hundred percent. So we want to be clear on what is the actual measurable? What? How fast are you running right now? How fast do you want to run? What is the distance over that you're running this so you right. can actually track it, right? Yeah. So if you are someone who wants to be better at self-love, for example, that's not a goal. I right. want to be better at self-love. Okay, what does that actually mean? Each morning, the goal could be each morning, I want to say in the bathroom mirror, mirror with a big smile on my set face, I love you, Amy. I, I'm celebrating you. You're doing a great job. And yeah. now that goal is something that we can measure. Did yes. I do it each day? Did I say the whole thing? Did I miss a day? Right? Like we can, is it realistic that I, yes. that I can do this? Is it timely? Do I want to say it for 30 days? Do I want to say it for 60? Being clear, right? We can yes. measure it. Is it attainable, achievable? I think so. Is it a stretch for me? Because maybe I don't speak. I speak this kind of stuff to myself all the time. But for somebody right. saying something kind of themselves, they might be like, no way, Jose. Yeah. Am I looking in, my, in the mirror and saying something like that to myself? Right. It's such a big stretch, right? So is there a shorter sentence they could say, right? But making it very clear and specific so that if, if someone like me were working with them, I could really see that they had made progress and they can right. see they've made progress over time. Right. 100%. And then noticing, okay, after you've set this smart goal, what are you doing in order to help yourself have the success to follow through with it? Yes. So I would be encouraging them to perhaps if it's the bathroom mirror idea to write the thing on the bathroom mirror or put a sticky note or something. And listen, it's, it's uncomfortable when you're being that vulnerable. And my kids were seeing that I had wrote, written on the mirror. I am enough. And my husband was seeing that and they're questioning, why are you writing this mommy? Yeah. And it's, it's, you're vulnerable when you're opening yourself up for this dialogue. But having been a person who's gone through that, I can honestly tell you that it is one of the best things to open up the dialogue yes. with the people that are the closest to you so that they feel that they can also be vulnerable and real about the things that are in their own mind and their own heart and their own challenges and stuff. Right. Because you've been vulnerable as well. I hear so often the parents, um, parents saying, well, I don't, my kids have to see me as a certain way. They have to see me as strong. They have right. to, 
They should see me as strong, not as somebody who has a problem. Well, you are a real human. Yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. So let's role model real humanness yes. and role model how we are aiming. Notice my word, not trying, but aiming to be better. Yes. We are focused on doing the things to be better. Right. Yes. And that we do have challenges. We do make mistakes, all of these things. Uh, but that, it, that would be my process for goal setting and, and following through. I think that's a, a great, those are great suggestions. And I, I, and I think too, you know, you have to be, I love the idea that you say you have to be human, you know, you have to show your kids your good side and your bad side, because when they go out into the real world, if you give them this facade and all of a sudden they go out into the real world and they realize the real world is not as perfect as mom and dad made it. It's not the Brady Bunch family, you know, and then all of a sudden they're in shock, you know, and they say, all these kids are on Xanax. All these people are on Xanax. Well, why? Because they can't handle the stress. Well, maybe they weren't, they, they weren't taught the right way to handle stress when they were growing up. Maybe, you know, the world has changed, but nobody showed them how to change along with the world, you know? And like you said, incorporating that self-love, that self-worth, putting those stickies on, really, you know, focusing on who you are, where you want to be, you know, and, and all these little things, all, all these tips that you put together, you know, can make you, you know, drug-free and also happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And that's where you want to be. You want to be drug-free and happy. You don't want to be one of those Xanax people walking around and you don't, you want to be a happy, healthy, productive person, enjoying life and loving who you are. And I think that's what it boils down to. Now, if you had to tell the listeners from everything we talked about, because you gave such amazing advice throughout this whole entire session, what would you tell people, like some takeaways, some important things to remember that will make an impact on their life? Uh, the the recap would be, if you could do the baby photo activity, I really believe that this is a step one in connecting to your enoughness. Yeah. And the second take take takeaway, because I believe in only a couple of things, would be to be mindful of how often you're saying the word should, mm -hmm. need to, have to. And really looking at those words, being mindful of where they're coming up and aiming where possible to reframe so that you are speaking with more kindness, compassion, and love to yourself. I love that. I love that. Now tell everybody the di different services that you provide because you do a lot of things and you really help people tremendously. I love your work. I love, you know, what you do. I think you're doing an amazing job. Tell everybody a little more about what you do and also how they can find you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So as a, a coach, I work with a variety of different people, uh, professional working parents. I work with executives. I work with people on life coaching or wellness coaching. There's a, a wide variety and really it's about helping people where they're at, get to where they want to go. Uh, I call myself like a GPS. So I'm simply a guide. I'm not the person who has all the answers, but I'm a guide to help you connect with uh, what's true to you and uh, go where you want to uh, end up in the future. Uh, I also have a podcast as well, Power to the People Pleaser. So I'm uh, super pumped about that. And uh, I speak on a variety of different topics for different organizations around wellness and emotional intelligence, uh, these kinds of uh, areas. So uh, people can find me at my website, amyballantine.com. They can also find me on Instagram or LinkedIn. I'm simply Amy Ballantine, and uh, I'm really grateful, grateful for your kind words and your, your oh, compassion today and all these you. amazing questions. I'm so grateful to have you on the show. You really, you're, you're, you are, you are amazing. And I love everything that you do. You really, you know, I think this is a, an important topic and I think, you know, by changing people's, you know, way of thinking, by changing how they feel about themselves. You know, there are so many things that people can improve in their lives. So many people go through, you know, um, they go through anxiety, they go through depression, they go through so many different things in life. They have lack of self-worth, low self-esteem, all these things tie into what you're teaching and how people can overcome all these different types of conditions. And they say 70% of illnesses are caused by stress. So, you know, think about what we go through in life and by incorporating everything that you've taught us today, you know, you could really help people, you know, with, with their stress, with their overall conditions, you know, prevent people from having, you know, certain mental conditions that they acquire throughout life, you know, because of the things they go through in life and not knowing the right way to handle them. And then also giving people, showing people that we all are special. 
And we all, we all, we all deserve to be loved and, and we all deserve to love ourselves because we're, we're special and, and people have to remember that. I always say we are number one. And I think that's what people need to keep in their mind. And that's what you're teaching. And I, and I love you for that. I really do. I think you're doing a great job and I thank you so much and tell everybody just one more time your website. So they remember it. Yes, please. AmyBalantine.com or Amy Ballantine on Instagram or LinkedIn. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I had a great time and I, you know, I hope that you'll come back again and then we could talk some more because this has been amazing. We're truly amazing. For sure. for sure. I look forward to it. All right. You have a great day. You too.